Park Preservation Commission. We will begin this meeting. Um, would you like to call this to order or do? Yeah. yeah. I'm going to stand for the pledge. I pledge I allegiance to the, to the flag of the United, United States, States of America and, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, and indivisible, with liberty and justice, and justice for all. And then, Madam Clerk, can you do roll call? Yes. Tonight's roll call, Lebrecht. Here. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I'm off you. Ward? Here. Pemberton? Here. Benoit? Here. And Chair Cease? Here. You have a quorum. Thank you, Madam Chair. Do we have any citizen comments? No, ma'am. And no hands are raised. No. Okay. I need a um, motion to approve the agenda and the consent agenda. I so move. Thank you, Commissioner Ward. May I have a second? I'll second. Thank you, Commissioner Pemberton. Okay, moving on to yep. special present. Any changes? Oh, excuse me. Right. So, do we have any changes that you would like to see made on the agenda? Okay. We're, Madam Clerk is going to take a vote. Voting on tonight's agenda and consent agenda. Ward? Yeah. Lebrecht? Yeah. Pemberton? Yes. Benoit? Yes. And Chair Cease? Yes. Your agenda and consent agenda are approved, and approved on tonight's consent agenda are the February 11th, 2021 regular meeting minutes and the March 11th, 2021 regular meeting minutes. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, moving on to special orders, presentations, and reports. We have no proclamations or awards. We do not have a city administration report. For the chair report, um, I just want to say we're doing great. I'm proud of our commission. I'm very grateful to serve on it. And um, Commissioner Pemberton, I can't wait to have your um, help because I know that you're going to be the muscle in the group. <laughs> okay, so um, it's been suggested that we forego applying for a CLG grant this year and wait for next year, given how busy we are, so that we can just focus on the one that we're currently working on without distraction. Um, I can speak to that, Chair C, if you want, if you want me to at all. Uh, yes. So to be very specific, if we wanted to do another CLG grant for this round right now, we would have to put it in by April 12th. And as easy as it would be, if I did speak to Katie at the state, as easy, she was encouraging us, as easy as it would be for me just to cut and paste from the last one, and then they go, yeah, sure, we'll give you more money, we would have to start the new grant in June, right after we finish the first grant. And so... I told her that I thought that with the big 26 signs we've got going on right now, we have more than enough of a project to finish complete and get community support behind and to have the city be happy with the product that we put out to as part of the LG grant. We can apply um, next year. There'll be another round. Um, but I don't feel like we should be able to, we should try to take on something else before we complete the first one. I just, I personally don't feel prepared to do that as well as we still have a couple members we need to fill out from the commission as well too. I think that I'm pretty satisfied with us getting 26 physical signs and then on top of that an additional number of people that are going to be on the walking tour as well that won't have signs. So I think once we see the success there are several people who are willing to help not just CL, not
not just the State Historical Preservation Office through National Park Service, but also KMTA also indicated that they would love for it to apply. And I think we just need to finish and have that track record behind us um, because it, it is a big responsibility to have this grant. So that is my my personal opinion of why I'm, I'm not prepared to write a grant, which, yeah, it can be done by the 12th, but we'd have to actually do it. <laughs> so that was my input. Thank you, Commissioner Breck. Any comments? Okay. Uh, the next thing, we're um, canceling tomorrow's work session because we won't have a quorum. And this will be the third week in a row that we have canceled our work session on Fridays. So what I would like to do, if you're agreeable, is go back to our original format where we, before we have our regular meeting on the second Thursday of each month, we proceed it with the work session, followed by the regular meeting. And then at another time, probably not on a Friday morning, maybe not even during the day, we choose to have just one other work session. So that gives us two work sessions a month. And if we need more, you know, because the project's getting hot and heavy, we can always call for that. Personally, I'm not comfortable just just meeting the one time a month. So that'll be something that I'd like you to consider. And then, because we are going to be pretty drained following our June um, hurrah, I think it might be a good idea not to have a meeting at all in July, but I don't know how you guys feel about that. So those are my things that I wanted to share in my chair report. Oh, uh, Commissioner LeBrec? I will eventually be quiet. But I should frame the Friday meeting by saying I, I'm part of the cause of us not being on meeting Fridays. That's simply because of my work schedule. I have meetings that I absolutely have to attend. So I don't think any of us were ever comfortable with Fridays at around that time as a whole, but that's the time we landed on. Um, however, on the sideline, um, I believe that we're in a place now, and you'll hear, I think, when you see Commissioner Benoit's uh, reports, as well as any reports that I might make, that we're in a good place. But we really are now down to individual work during the week that's not necessarily work that we're doing together on a Friday. And I would agree that we need to meet a couple times a month. I would also tell you there is work that is going on every single day on this project. So. It's not like we've slowed it down and we're like, hey, we just don't need to meet. It's just that there's a tremendous amount of work that's going on um, every single day. And the Friday meetings, um, I think we can accomplish showing off the amazing work that's been done at this meeting and then at a potential other work meeting too. Um, the sign design and so on you'll hear has mostly been done. Now we're going to need to figure out how to get some volunteers to get holes dug in the ground and get the signs in. But that's not something we necessarily accomplish on a Friday meeting, right? Um, it's something that we accomplish in committee meetings offline. That, so. uh, let me just make clear that I did not intend to sound like I didn't believe that we weren't getting much done and we were just sailing along. I know there's been a lot no, of work going on. No, not taking that way. Not taking okay. that way at all, Chair. Okay. Not at all. Thank you. Okay. So... Um, are we allowed at this point, Madam Chair, to actually um, confirm going back to our regular format for meetings and then choosing a time for a work session? Yep, yeah, absolutely. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Go for it. All right. So, how do you guys feel about um, going back to our original format on the second Thursday of each month um, before our regular meeting we have a work session? Okay, Commissioner Ward's okay with it. Commissioner Benoit, she's okay with it. Oh, wait. Actually, I have a question. I have a question. When you say that, do you mean if our regular meeting starts at 6, that we do a work session starting at 5? No. No. What we were doing is a work session at 6, and then at 7.30, the regular session. But I have some good news. Because 
Madam Clerk Ballou told me that we actually don't have to set a time like, you know, we're going to do an hour and a half work session and then, you know, right at 7.30 we're going to start a regular meeting. She's saying that we can do it where we have our work session at 6 and when it's done, we take a little break, come back, and then have our regular meeting, which would probably get us out of here a little sooner. Are you okay with that, Commissioner Benoit? Okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that all sounds fine. I just was kind of just trying to figure out when the work session part would start and 6 o'clock is fine with me. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you. Okay, so now on this additional work session, what comes to mind? I'm going to ask you, Commissioner Benoit, to bring up your schedule because you seem to have a little bit more scheduled in the late afternoon evening. For me, I, I am pretty busy <laughs> most days and most nights, but I, the time that's most open for me is Monday nights and Friday nights. So my first choice would be like Monday at 6 if we were going to do something, or well, 5.30 or 7 or sometime after 5.30 or 6 if okay. that works. For, okay. Madam Chair, may I ask a question? Were we to choose 5.30 or 6 on a Monday night, that's the council meeting. Yeah, if we so, just go on the off Mondays, like the 19th of April okay. is, would be one day available. Oh, okay. Um, and the 3rd of May, those are two Mondays that would be free. Okay, so let's go for the 19th of April, if my commissioners agree, and I'm going to suggest that we wait um, on the May one until after we have the May meeting, okay. unless somebody, you know, gets a hold of me and says, hey, this is really important, we need a special meeting, right? Does that make sense? Okay, do we need to vote on this? Uh, I would like to have at least verbal instead of the okays, just not no, okay. no head nodding, but can I yes. hear the Okay, verbal? commissioners, can you please unmic yourselves or unmute yourselves and let uh, Madam Chair know... We need a motion. We need a motion. Oh, we need a motion. If, if you could just call for any objections, that would okay. satisfy. Do, you, do I have any objections to this? No. No. Oh, um, the only thing is... Uh, six o'clock works better for me than five thirty because I work until six. So. Okay. Perfect. Well, other than that, yeah, sounds Perfect. good. Perfect. Thank you, Commissioner Pemberton. Okay. All right. So, would you like each of the commissioners then to? Nope, that's good. So, April nineteenth at six p.m. That's a Monday for a work session, and then no more Fridays at no. ten forty-five. No. And then the May meeting on the thirteenth will start at six with the work session and the meeting will follow immediately after the work session, whatever time you end. Yes. Perfect. And then um, what would be the next available Monday for a work session following our meeting? Then it would be the 17th. Um, the 31st is a holiday, so that puts that out. Let's go for the 17th. We're getting, like, we're going to be moving crazy at that point. And then you might, yeah. You can just do whatever you want from there. Okay, perfect. And we're all, okay, Commissioner Benoit. Well, I was just wondering, since Jim doesn't even get off till 6, do we want to at least start at like 6.15? Because otherwise, if he's not quite ready yet, we won't be waiting. We won't necessarily have a quorum. So just want to make sure it's going to work for you, Jim. I mean, yeah, that would work. Or okay. I can just make sure that I'm here by 6. Um, nope. But 615 would work. Yeah, we can do 615. Not okay. a problem. Okay. okay. Okay, and we're all okay with that, right, Commissioners? All righty. Yes. Okay, yes. and so the meetings in July, how do you guys feel about that? We will have done our big hurrah and completed our CLG work by the end of June. I feel like that sounds great. I'll just stay home and take naps and drink wine and not 
anything after getting these signs done. So, perfect! Sounds great to me as well. I was thinking just from a pure quorum perspective as well, because you know, people have things going on in the summertime, so if, if anybody's out, then you schedule a meeting and you can't have it. So let's give everybody a break. I agree. Commissioner and Ward? Why not Are you finished, Commissioner Lebrecht? Okay, sorry. Commissioner Ward? You're okay with this? Okay. And uh, Commissioner Pemberton? Taking yes. July off? Yes, okay. So, um, Madam Clerk, do you want each of the commissioners to, or uh, just say is great. any objections? Nope, I got it. They all responded. So. Okay, perfect. Yep. Okay. Now, um, the uh, CLG reports, Planning and Advocacy Report Committee. Um, Mr. Benoit? Okay, let's see. Many, many things have changed and happened since I submitted the paperwork for this packet. So, um, basically, the highlights, every single, all the property owners have been notified whether they're getting assigned, or if they're not getting assigned, they're just going to be on the tour. Um, I got all the information quite a while ago to the city, so they have everything they need to do the sign permits. Um, all the reviews of the sign narrative narratives were done by the property owners, by SHPO, by Doug Capra, Resurrection Bay Historical Society, and I coordinated and uh, collaborated with Lee Pulaski. So all signs have been reviewed, at least the first part, and all of that's done. All the sign materials, the narratives, and the photos were into the sign designer on the date they were supposed to be, so we were on time. They got all the materials. Um, I had a meeting with Peter yesterday. All the signs are basically, there's a draft of every single 26 signs are done. And I got to look at them all, which I'm going to actually show you tonight, the drafts. So what we did yesterday was kind of looked at it and, and for the kind of spatial arrangement to make sure things look good. And in some cases, he's like, well, you could use another picture for this one or maybe like another paragraph of narrative to kind of make them look good. So we went through that process. Um, so I know what kind of things I need to give him to put on the signs. But the next step now is I have to review all 26 signs and like for the details, like spelling and grammar, if captions are right, and just all the stuff looks correct. As soon as that's done, then I'll give my edits to him, he'll fix that, and then I'll have those edited documents that I will send to all of you and to SHPO and to Resurrection Bay Historical Society. And so for you guys, your job will be send it to your property owners and say, here's the final. Do you see any problems? Are you okay with this? For you, you could take a look and go, well, I see there's a mistake here. Historically, this isn't true. Or if you see spelling or grammar, grammar errors, uh, errors, you can point that out. But it's like kind of like the final tweaking, not going back and redoing the story, but just kind of like, this is like, fix these final things before it goes to be manufactured. Um, it'll be the final review for SHPO, which they've requested, plus for Resurrection Bay Historical Society and Sewer Community Library Association, kind of opportunity to make sure we caption things correctly for their photos so all the credits look good because um, that's important, especially to them on that. Um, I had the discussion with Peter yesterday. Whenever you, you're doing something like this, like signs, you have a variety of people with different writing styles, and you're trying to put everything together into one voice, and you're trying to um, educate people, but at the same time, you're trying to tell a good story. And so it's always good, he said, to have an objective, 
person hasn't seen this stuff at all before to look at them and go, wow, that's super cool. I want to hear more about that, or I don't get it, or, you know, that's really not that interesting to me. So they are going to actually do that part and help us if we need to tweak any of the stories because that's something that they do all the time. So he's going to take that on. Luckily, we have done such a good job of getting all the stuff in, in time and before the date, and giving him all the stuff at once instead of spreading it all out, that we've ended up being able to save quite a bit of money from sign design. So we have money to pay him to do this review. Plus, I think we're going to have a little extra, even more than that, left, which Tom could tell you about later. But... So it's good to have that. He's going to have somebody in his uh, office take a look. And so any ideas he has, he'll run that by me first and uh, we'll, you know, tweak things or reorder things or um, whatever to make that work. Um, let's see. So as I said, I'll do those final edits and then I'll send everything out to you. My expectation, I just got them yesterday, I just started. It's gonna take me several days to kind of work through them all. Um, and as soon as I get them done, I'll send them back to him. Hopefully it will be pretty quick. So I, I think within a week, we should I should be able to send what looks like pretty final, final stuff to all of you, you guys to take a look at. Um, Let's see here. In the meantime, um, the thing that we're kind of focusing on after we get these edits done is creating the paper walking tour map. And so what that requires is the list of all the properties with a little summary of like, this this is the property, here's where, it, where it's located, and just like a little brief sentence or two about the history. So one side of the map, I'm just guessing, is going to be narratives. The other side is going to be the map. And so for the person to make the map, they actually need the narrative done with the addresses so that they can figure out how to put that on. And we did talk about that in the last work session. I um, have already created kind of like the little summaries for all the 26 properties that we did the signs for just summarizing, boiling it down to, like, you know, most important things. And so, but we still have properties that are not getting a sign, but they're going to be in the walking tour, either because they don't want a sign or because they already have a sign or whatever. So we discussed this at the last work session. Tommy's kind of taking charge of that part. So is, I, some of you guys are working on that. When you get it all done, you can send it to me, I'll incorporate it in the document that I have, and then that'll be ready to go to whoever's making the map. So that's something we just need to keep on top of. Um, let's see here. So what we basic, what that kind of boils down to is we have 26 signs. And then we had a list of like maybe 20 more properties. So our map will probably have about 45 properties on it all together, give or take. Okay? And I wanted to show you some examples of what the signs like look like if you want to see. I have a question. Why is okay. the Orlander building, uh, you know, within the green band under the funding line? Tongi to figure out. 
and I hope we can't. In my so. paper, it's orange. It's not green. Well, no, but so I, that's why that's kind of like it's it's you know I don't know whether we can afford it or not. I hope we can. Yeah, because Todd is expecting it. Well, it's been right on the line all this time, so I. Did you get a hold of Todd? Better job of telling him that. Yes. Oh, good. Yeah. I will be able. Commissioner Lebrecht. If I can, I'll keep it short. Um, I am the, the budget picture is starting to come much better into view. We press the paper some now that the signs are in. He couldn't give us, he could only give us a fluffy number at the beginning because he didn't know how much work, how many hours he was going to have to put in. Um, I was on a, on a, I had a call with him, uh, Marianne, and he mentioned that we are able to stay completely within the budget because of how much work that we've done. So he never knows, right? Because people can hand him like a couple pictures and a paragraph of narrative and go, here, you do it. That's not what we've done, clearly. So we're going to be able to stay within his budget and he's going to help us do a bunch of things. There may be room for that 26 on those shortly. Um, the way that it's structured, it's about $11,000 the total design time for all the times that we have. It doesn't include that 26 signs. And then there's additional, and you'll see when you see these signs Marianne's talking about, this guy is pretty amazing at what he does. But <clears throat> anyway, if there, there's the production of the signs themselves and then the posts and so on that they need to install. Now that I have a hard number, because it was a fluffy number, if you will, I'll know that the cost of the post themselves is pretty standard, the shipping, all those things, we have those numbers now. So I'm reworking the budget to include that. The other piece I can talk about later is just whether we're able, you know, what the cost is going to be of getting into the and or the walking store. I have some numbers on those today. So that's, that's budget coming into, coming into, yes ma'am. Thank you. Commissioner Ward. I was just going to say, if you've got a response from Todd, I don't mind moving down in the list in order to put that building because it's a prominent feature of downtown. And I think if he, I, my, my house is up on the hill, it's fine. But his is a prominent building downtown, and I would go to 26 and let him get above the funding line. That's kind of I don't have a problem with that. Thank you, Commissioner Ward. Commissioner Benoit. Okay. I'm happy to show you some of these, what these signs are looking like. They're, like you say, in draft. This is, you know, I have to read all of them and come up with some edits, and then talk, or Peter will fix them, and then they'll get sent to you. And um, property owners have not seen this version, yet they've seen what we've already sent them and okayed that, which is basically this. But So let's see. I can share my screen. Can you see my screen? Yep. Oh. Okay. So. That's cool. Uh, Okay, so here's the first one. I'll just kind of give you a really fast rundown on each one. Okay. The Malloy House on 6th Avenue, this whole story is about the earthquake and the, the people that lived here at the time that it happened. And they were right near the standard oil tanks exploding. This is their house right here. And Susie Anderson, who lives, uh, Anderson White, who lives there now, she was nine years old at the time that this happened. This is her letter that she wrote about it afterwards in her drawing, one of those drawings that was in the museum when they had the exhibit of all the kids that had their drawings of what the earthquake looked like. So that's the focus of that. As you can see, we have our, our main title, like if Wallace could talk, the address, or if we have a name for the house, we use Malloy House. This stuff right here will go away. This is just so we can keep track. But down here, you can see here is all of the um, logos. So, Stewart Historic. Here, I'll show you. So, we 
we've got our logo. Um, you're not showing credit to. You're not showing the logo. Can, so what? What are you seeing? I see. Okay, now we're at the logos. Um, okay. Maybe you can move it to the right or left or something. It gets cut off. But, okay, so this is the green you chose? Well, we this green is still not a final thing, but this is just what we have right at this moment. I like it. We're, yeah, I, I like it too. I think a green is probably a good color. Maybe we tweak it a little bit, but a dark a dark green, I think it's good. We'll just have to see because he was talking about making some of the photos sepia, he called it, mm -hmm. which is a little different color. And so I want to kind of see what that looks like and how it would work with the green. Mm -hmm. But what I was trying to show you here is here's our logo. Uh -huh. we have, we're showing credit that we're getting the, the money from the state historic preservation office, the city's logo. Stewart Community Library Association, Resurrection Bay Historical Society, then we have Lee Dulesky and Doug, Doug Capra. Can I make and a comment so, about that? About sure. the Okay. Since we've broken out Lee Pulaski and Doug Capra, um, are we allowed to put Mary Berry and Pat Williams, since a lot of the um, historic data that we have are from their books? Or because they're not with us anymore, is that why we can't? No, I put this here because these people are reviewers. But, for example, I've used tons of information from Doug Capra's books, but we're not crediting his book right here. Right. When people go to, when they go, this little code goes to a web page that's going to have a walking to our map, our histories, plus it'll have a complete list of credits and resources. So that's the place you put all the complete credits for okay. all the books. Okay. Thank you, Commissioner Benoit. All the Benoit. people we've talked to, all okay. the people that have helped. So, because we just can't fit all that stuff in a sign. But these guys are people that are partners we sent letters to and have helped, like, discuss all these different signs and what should be on them. Thank you. So that's kind of like how they're laid out. The second one is uh, where the current... Currently, is the Adams Street B and B, and so it's the standard oil manager's house. Um, he showed us this last week, right? And so this is basically about the impact Standard Oil had on Seward as a community, and how they were here, and then the earthquake destroyed all their properties or their tanks and stuff like that. And a lot of the property uh, went in the ocean, which is why it's called beachfront property. The next one, trying to figure out. <laughs> Second. Okay. This one is about the Keating House, which is on Sixth Avenue, uh, and basically that this house was moved from Mile Seven in a place that used to be called Woodrow, where there was homesteads. And so I made this whole sign about how back in the day people moved their houses all the time. It was pretty common. And pictures of people moving their houses. This is the Coleman house uh, being moved up 4th Avenue back in the day. So that's kind of what this sign is about. Nice. What's a Quonset? The two Quonsets on 6th Avenue, Deb Hoffmeister has. This one is all about what is a Quonset? You know, it, so it's all related to these were brought, brought here by the military as barracks. And the place where those Quonset huts are now, actually probably in their original location because that was the place that the, what they call the 205th Coastal Artillery Unit was staged. And they were guys that shot down planes out of the sky. So here's a picture of one of the guys that was there and his big gun that he used. And so it shows what the Quonsets looked like back in the day. Here's what it looks like right now. And actually it's rumored that they brought entertainers here and they stayed, you know, for the military and they stayed in these Quonsets. So uh, Lauren Bacall was one of the people that supposedly stayed in the Quonset. Wow. 
Okay. So this one is about the tides in. Oh. And I, it was built in 1941. And at that time, that's when the war had started. There was blackouts happening. There was huge, the, the fire that burned, burned up half of Fourth Avenue. There was a lot of stuff happening. And there was a letter that this guy, I forget, it's in here. Uh, somebody wrote an official letter and called Seward a pathetic spectacle because of all the hardships and the hard times that people were going through at that time. So because there's nothing specifically fascinating about that building or anybody that lived there, I made the story about what was happening around it and how it fit into that picture. So because did, when the fire happened, tons of housing burned up for people. There's a lot of people I had nowhere to live. And that was the time that this place was built as like a little hotel apartment. So it was perfect timing for, for people. Do so you that's have, what that one is about. Do you have any of the um, Fort Raymond, um, like, you know, big houses that looked like the Tides Inn? But obviously aren't because it says it was built in 41. Or is it possible uh, it was moved? That, Go ahead. You know, the only how the only thing I've seen that looks just like that is the UFO USO building. It was an old one, and at, at the, the owners owners of the Tides Inn originally thought maybe that was their building and it didn't move there, but it's not. That's the only other building I've seen that looks like that shape of that building. Okay. Um, Okay, so this one is about Resurrect Art Coffee House, and the whole theme is how that place somehow connects with people. As soon as they come in, people, once they've been there, they, they make a connection to it. And it's been doing that since it was built as a church way back in the day, the Methodist Church, until now. And so that's that story. This one is uh, about St. Peter's Church. It seems like the key thing about this place is that uh, uh, painting behind the altar by the famous artist. And so we made that the focal point of this. Um, I can see that for some reason he's got street hair. That's something that would need to come off. But that's um, what that sign is about. Nice. Okay, so then this one is the... Uh, Orlander. CB. I mean, CB, yeah. No, CB. CB, Which was, yeah. used to be the Seward Commercial Company. So it's all about when it used to be the Seward Commercial Company. You can see it right here with the sign. This is like originally Seward Commercial Company. Back in the day, it was on the south end of 4th Avenue. And then um, a new one was built in position where it is now. This is what it looked like inside the store. And the title, well, Get Well Fed and Well Read, was all because back in those days, the people of Seward wanted to have a library. They didn't have one, so what they did is they shared. They had different businesses, and the newspaper and the churches all participated and acted like libraries. So in the this photo, it says there's a picture or uh, a little sign that says circulating library. So this business was one of the, the places that acted like library. You could come and bring books and take books. And so all of that community effort to have a library by sharing was what actually became the Seward Community Library Association in the 30s and eventually became our library now. So that's what this is. And so this is kind of cool because it kind of helps. It talks about it. It helps highlight one of our partners. Okay, so then here's Homebrew Alley, which he needs to do some work in the sign because we moved this and the arrows are not pointing to the right place right now. But this basically, the title came from Paul Snyder's book, The Simple City on Res Resurrection Bay or whatever it's called. So it talks about the history of Homebrew Alley, and, um, which is basically the place where the moonshiners lived. Um, so that's 
that's the story about that. And then here's this one is about the Brownells house. We call it Imagine and Inspired because D.C. Brownell, he was like one of the founder of the people that came in the boat that found Se founded Seward. And he bought the first commercial property and he put this uh, hardware store down the south end of, of 4th Avenue. And here was his house up on 1st Avenue. And uh, he was friends with Rockwell Kent, and Rockwell Kent used to come and stay with him at his house, so that's why we called it Imagine Inspire. Okay, this one. Taming Mother Nature for now is all about the diversion dam and the flume and why that was a problem, why, you know, Lowell Creek raging through town and flooding like every year, every other year, and uh, damaging and destroying buildings was a problem. And so what we did about it by trying to build this flume that would carry the creek down to the ocean, which lasted about 10 years and just didn't work, and eventually led to di building the diversion dam. And so this talks about that story, some of the effects of the flooding. This, here's some guys inside the flume, and here's some, some people up at the top of uh, Lowell Creek. Okay, so the next one is about the train depot. We call it Safe from the Flood because back in the day when Lowell Creek raged through town, it was down at the end up where the Lowell Creek was going off into the ocean. And so there was concern that building was going to be destroyed, so it got moved to its current location. And one of the reasons is because that flume didn't oh. work, and so the creek would keep coming out because um, debris would build up in it. And so here's a really cool picture that is uh, uh, blowing up one of, the, one of the bridges, I think, because there was so much debris, and it was making things flood. And so that was at the time that I think they said, yeah, we got to move that building. So is this depot where the depot is now, or is that where we actually have our train depot currently? In the port. This is the current where it currently is. Okay. Both of these pictures. All of Very these pictures. cool. Yeah. Okay, so here's Brother Hawkins, which is obviously one of our oldest buildings. It talks about the history of Brown and Hawkins and that business. And um, Virginia Darling. And then this is a picture of Richard and Dawn Darling when she was a kid. It was done by Rockwell Kent. It's actually in the Oh, museum. cool. I don't know why I never see it. It never seems to be displayed, but I just thought that was super cool, so I wanted to put it on there. Okay, and then here's Sue's house, which we basically made primarily about Gus Manthe because she figured out the Manthe family lived there by stuff that she found in the walls. And we found out that Gus Manthe was, uh, like, an amazing guy. He, like, did all these different things. And um, one of the things he did was he was in the band, Seward Band. So here's some of the things that we, or she found in the wall. Here's a picture of his family. Here's a picture of the Seward Band back in, I can't remember, and I can't read it, but way back when. That's very good, Sue. Maybe you should yeah. keep that, yeah, maybe you should keep that in and, do Orlander next run or something. Well, we'll see. We'll see what Orlander looks like, but I'm hoping we can do them all. So the bustling terminal, this was, uh, we wanted to do a sign about the 4th Avenue Wharf because it was so important, but there was no good place to put a sign down there where it used to be because the Sea Life Center is there now. So this sign would go over at the Founders Monument where you could look over towards the Sea Life Center and look over towards the place the wharf used to be, and it talks about the wharf and why it was so important. This one is the Beating Heart of Seward. This is one we're going to put at Kawabi Park. Um, it's basically to talk about the business district over time, and um, looks like this is one I have to come up with another photo. So 
that's what this one is about. I'll have a little brief thing about Kawabi in there because Kawabi Park already has interpretive signs, so it's not about that. It's about Fourth uh, Avenue, and we needed a place on city property we could put a sign because the rest of it is pretty much private. Okay, this one is about the Marathon Apartments, which was a mystery of like how old was this place, but I found this photo that shows that building there in 1906. So it was built sometime before that. And the whole story is basically right nearby is the what used to be the federal building, which was also the railroad headquarters. So we think that this place was a boarding house throughout time pretty much. Um, and that it was probably a place for the railroad workers to stay. So the focus is kind of like on it being, you know, a really old building that was a boarding house and probably was a, a place for the railroad workers, um, et cetera. Uh, Mary Ann, mm -hmm. I just want to make sure we put Mount Marathon on that apartment. Yes. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, That's just good, because good. the owners were very specific when they talked about it. All right, I'll make a note to put that on edits. I did have that in the write-up, except uh, for this, this sign thing, he probably just didn't catch that. Okay, so here's the Van Gilder. Oops, here's the Van Gilder. Um, so this one is kind of like this place is famous because of an old pinochle game, because of the ghost, because um, <laughs> circumnavigators stayed there, stuff like that. So it's got an interesting history. Uh, it looks like we need another photo, or we need a little bit more narrative right here to fill out that space, but. That's kind of what that one's about. This is an article from the paper that talks about the lady that got shot in the hotel, which is why it goes stories. This is Million Millionaire's Row, and so this one is about the Holland House. Um, and so we're still trying to figure out what we exactly want to do with the photos, if we want to take anything out here. But um, this one was a great one because there's not many photos of interior, interiors of homes from back in the day, so we found some of those from the Holland House, so we put those in there. Plus, there's some really interesting pictures of just people living their lives there. Um, and then this one is the McMullen Building, which was kind of like where the fire stopped when the 1941 fire happened. Um, and so you can see, you know, talks about all the different things that that building was used for over time, plus the fire, and it shows the fire stopping right at the building, and the McMullins, the people that were a part of that history. Okay, so then this one, oops, this one is about the Sweatman House that slid down a hill and survived in peace. <laughs> And it focuses on how it got moved over. It was a stucco Johnson house. It got, you know, the whole story about sliding down the hill and being moved over by horses. And then the Sweatmans, he was the, um, bought the sewer drugstore. He was a pharmacist, bought the sewer drugstore, was important in the banks in town. His wife, Viola Sweatman, was very important, both of them in the library, benefactors for the library. Um, so you, that's kind of what that story is about. Do you have a, do you have a picture of the Sweatman house? No. Okay. There, that was like, couldn't find that. We looked. Okay. And believe it or not, there's no good one. It was like, they look like somebody took them on their iPhone or something. It's oh. Anyway. Well, they'll be standing in front of it so they can see the real deal. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Okay, so then this one is the Hale House, which is another house up there in Millionaire's Row. And so uh, it's kind of about them. I think they were mainly bankers. And so it talks about what they did in town. And uh, we tried to show interesting pictures of their life, like this big giant hunt that happened annually with a lot of the guys in town. And there's like a lot of people did this back in the day. They'd go off for a day of 
outside, and they'd use those little railroad car things that they could <laughs> either were motorized or they could push themselves, and they'd go off to, like, Bear Lake or wherever and go fishing or have a picnic. So they're sitting on one of those little railroad cars. And then this one is about the Sexton House, which is now the Generations Building. And so the focus on this is all about Sylvia Sexton and her photographs and um, her story. And I'm still trying to find a picture. It's hard to find because the young. Yeah. But, well, yeah, she she's did not the... come. She did not come on that boat. She didn't come yeah, on but, the boat. Yeah, but she's there. Huh. Well, you have to show me that picture because okay. that, maybe that would be a good one. I can't remember seeing that. Uh, Marianne, yeah. I do know, I do know, I think Doug Capra's book has a chapter, and there is a picture of her in a long skirt with a suit and her cameras, and it's simply a picture of Sylvia. Perfect. So you I'm might to get that one. Okay, yeah, that's probably the best one. That Doug has sent, me, has sent me that picture. He thought Resurrection Bay Historical Society had it. They're like, no, ask the Sewer Community Library okay. Association, which I did today. Because I like that one, because they've got yeah. pictures of her. They've got pictures of her with this chained bear, which are nice pictures of her. But I think some people might not like the fact that the bear is captive. Right. So I'm trying to find something else if I can that still shows a good picture. I, of her. I thought there was one of just her standing there, and it was it was on a picnic where the the people were, you know they took a lot of picnics in those days, and she was kind of the photograph documenting all of that. So, yeah, I know the bear The bear was a little sad, but, um, yeah, I thought there was a, a good picture of her uh, on a picnic. I like, yeah. I like the yeah, idea. Yeah, there is a, a picture of her with somebody else on a picnic I have seen. So I, yeah, I like the something. idea of what uh, Commissioner Ward said, the, the picture of her with her photography, you know, equipment, mm -hmm. because that shows us exactly what she did. Yeah, I did send a message to Mary Tugas today with an image of that and said, do you have this? So I'm hoping she says yes. Okay, so then here's one about Mount Marathon. And it talks about how it's been super important to us in Seward for a long time. Some of the fact and fiction behind it. Uh, it looks like, yeah, I just have to fix uh, some of these photos uh, get a different resolution. And then here is the Orlander one. And it's called the classic structure on the street because originally there was a lady named Ellsworth that built that building. Yeah, and she's architect, and, I think, designer. And she's standing to the and right. After, and she's standing to the right of this gal with all the boxes. And she's in like yeah. woman's woman's man man clothes. It's a great photography. Yeah. I mean, photo. And then yeah. you see her dressed all like you know a nice. That's her. That's her. That's her. And I think I can't. I think that's her. Yep. Um. So after she built it. People talked about it as being the classiest structure on the street. And it was the first concrete. So, so that's kind of like what we have. Yay! So anyway, all of those I need to read through and make sure whatever tweaks need tweaking, I, I tell him and also supply the photographs that we need and the narrative, extra narrative, and all that kind of stuff. Um, and then we'll, then you guys will get a chance to like dig in. And So that's basically the result of all the stuff we've been doing. Excellent. In a nutshell, just so you can see what they look like. We're a hard working group. Yay! Yeah. So the bottom line is, um, we have done everything. We're on time. We're within the budget. And I think the signs look really great. And I think we're going to meet our timeline and get them done and tell a good story. So that's all I have for that. Do you want to do your Facebook report?
Sure. Okay. Uh, so in March, the page views, the people we reached, and the engagement was up 500 to 700 percent. Ah, so that's good. Wow. <laughs> um, let's see here. So this, so last month, our, you know, we're putting out posts about basically how to get involved, how to research an historic house, what stories does your house tell? And the most popular ones were about Sue's house because we talked about all the cool stuff that were in the walls from her house, like the advertisements for the Gentleman's Club, stuff like that. People really like that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so April, um, our poster schedules are basically about the walking tour, thanking our contributors, um, there's a video that Lee Plesky did a while back on the history of our flag, and then I, I kind of finished the series on all the properties that are on the National Register. St. Peter's is the last one, so that's there. Great. So for me, I'm starting this series on Amazing Women of Seward, and so what I did was I thought, well, I'll just start with Sylvia Sexton, and I took the sign for the uh, Sexton House and basically broke it into three pieces and created posts that basically came right from the sign and talk about her history. And um, I could, I, I, I thought, you know, what I would do is uh, pull out the other interesting women that are on our signs, like the old Swedman, for example. Uh, we don't have all the interesting women of Seward, basically, and these signs, so I might do, deviate a little bit. But my thought was, for every single sign that we did, which is 26, you could tell the story of the sign and break it up into three or four posts, meaning you could take one month to tell the story of that sign and get all the information out there. If the stuff is already written, we could really explain the history so that people, you know, get people interested in the walking tour plus the information that's already written. So basically it's like, that's like two and a half years of Facebook posts. They're pretty much sitting there waiting to go. If nice. we wanted to tell the story of the, what these signs are saying. So that was my brilliant idea for saving time and saving <laughs> energy is just using that stuff um, and kind of help promote what, we're, what we've been doing. Well, <clears throat> well done and good um, ideas. Thank you. And so, I think that is it for the Facebook post. So, like I say, next in May, it's about Sylvia Sexton, and then I'll figure out where to go from there. So, is there any like anything that needs to go out, like any meetings or announcements or anything you need to tell people about? Well, we'll just we'll want to be you know posting things about our hurrah party, you know, completion of our CLG, you know. But um, does anybody else have any questions or comments? Okay. Um, I apologize, okay. Commissioner Ward, but I should have called on you first um, for the Historic Overlay District. Well, one of the things, and not much has happened, because um, uh, I'm a committee of one, um, and I understand that we are taking a backseat to our grant. But once, you know, I I'm really glad we're not pursuing the second grant because this now needs to be the focus probably this fall. Um, Jackie uh, in um, community development is very supportive. We've got an application process kind of outlined. Um, we're look, you know, we're not getting a lot of support from planning and zoning. So um, I, Jackie and I have had two meetings scheduled, both of which she canceled. So um, probably once the CLG grant is over, I think we need to decide as a commission what we want to do with this. Um, it's going to be a big project. There'll be public hearings, but um, you know, we've got an application process. You know, I'm willing to talk to um, the building code people uh, so we can get some stuff 
uh, regarding building code outlined. I, I still think there's a lot of things that we can do, um, but at this point, um, it's beyond one person. I, I do need help, and I believe the CLG grant goes first, but after that, before we write a second one, um, we need to decide what we're going to do with the historic overlay. Absolutely. We're supposed to be dealing with that every five years, the historic plan. So taking on the historic overlay, we're right on time. Thank you, Commissioner right. Ward. And by the way, you were supposed to be working with a committee, not all by yourself. So we will... Well, my committee... You know, the point being is that I understood once the CLG grant was awarded that this needed to... You know, this doesn't have a timeline. The grant does. And I believe, in talking with Commissioner Labreck, that this is going to generate a lot of interest in a historic overlay, which is one of the reasons I was real interested in having some signs downtown, because that's going to be the focus of the historic overlay. So I think it really makes sense for the grant to come first. But at this point, it, you know, I mean, Jackie and I have had a lot of planning sessions. We have a lot of great ideas. Um, once we take a break in July, we're going to need to, like, refocus on this and decide how we as a commission want to deal with it. Yeah. But I've so, got lots of stuff. I've got lots of stuff. Great. So um, in our historic preservation plan or the Seward historic preservation plan, we're supposed to be, you know, updating and working on that every five years. This year is yes. year five because it's dated 2017. So... Right. There's no rest for the hard-working historic commission, except July. <laughs> it, just, it just needs to come up in the priorities at this point. Yes. Um, but I think, again, I believe that this grant, this walking tour, is going to it's already generated interest. Mm -hmm. So this will generate even more interest when we start talking about protecting the historic downtown. Agreed. Which will be controversial. Always is. Okay. So, oh, I'm sorry. Do we have a Lebrec has his hand up? Oh, I'm sorry, Commissioner Lebrec. I can't see your hand. What's going on? Oh, good. I just wanted to uh, echo what what uh, Commissioner Ward said. So, if you think about the progression of things, the Planning and Zoning Commission at one point in time was responsible for historic preservation. Oh. And then created, city created this historic preservation commission to do those very things that they might not have the time to do or that might not be their focus. The historic preservation commission then put together a historic preservation plan, which you just mentioned, which lays out things that we're supposed to do, like make recommendations about historic properties, protect and make recommendations on things that we see that might be endangered, et cetera, et cetera, and to bring attention to the importance of history to the city from an economic standpoint, from a history standpoint, from the well-being of the community standpoint. So then we said, okay, well, how are we going to do that? Well, we're going to do that by bringing attention to the value of history, which is what we're doing with the CLG project. Once you bring attention to it and people see that there's a monetary reason to do that, because people are staying longer in downtown or staying longer in Seward or are hearing about Seward or there's press buzz or whatever it is, then it becomes important to the citizens and it becomes important to the council and it becomes important to the planning and zoning and everybody else to say, wow, this is the real deal. Then you're coming behind with the overlay and saying, well, great, we just pointed out how important all these sites are. Now it's time to provide some direction and some oversight and some peace, if you will, in it. Again, right, letting people know it's not a scary thing, it's a preservation thing. So it's a progression. So I'm not going with Susan. Thank you, Commissioner Brett. Commissioner Ward? And I just wanted to let you know, when we've looked at application process, we're looking at building codes and things that may need to be modified for downtown. Um, we want to make sure that it's not scary to business owners because the historic building can be expensive. So can we mitigate some of those costs with some grants? Um, you know, KMTA may be real helpful in that arena. Um, but uh, so we've got lots of ideas. What we need to do is pull it together into some kind of format, um, which is just going to take a little bit of 
more than just me. So that's, you know, but th let's get the grant done. Let's get that sorted. But I'd like to sandwich this in between a second walking tour. Sounds good. Okay. New business. So, discuss the plan for National Historic Preservation Month in May 2021. So, we have a proclamation that will go out, and I have, well, I do have one uh, nomination <clears throat> for Colleen Kelly for the Historic Award, and I've um, sent um, an award um, nomination form to Linda Lasota, and um, I'm hoping to hear back from Linda. She was kind of shy. So, you know, because the, the deadline on that is the 20th. So if you guys, if there's people that you want to recommend, um, you, you should do it. And by the way, on the city's website, on our page, there is a, a, a sheet of past recipients, of past awardees. And you can see that, you know, there's several that have been nominated and received their awards numerous times. So I'm trying to avoid that and kind of get some new, new blood, but, um, you know, valuable people. And um, anyway. Okay. So, discuss planning an open house in May or June, uh, celebration of the CLG grant completion, and I think we kind of already decided that that would be the end of June, so um, I think we're probably okay to just leave that where we are, because that's going to be greatly dependent on, you know, getting this thing completed and putting a nice public um, hurrah together, even if it's by Zoom. Yes, Commissioner Ward. Tongi, could, uh, Commissioner Lebrecht, could you, you had talked about this, and I just, a little review, something small we can do? So, I, we originally thought that we would do something like a ribbon cutting or something like that. And then the uh, Katie at the Historic Preservation Office at, at SHPO said, because of COVID, there are no expectations for us to do anything public. And we can satisfy the grant requirement by simply holding a meeting similar to this, just like, just like Mr. Bernal was showing the signs or whatever to say, this is where the project started, this is why, and here's what we've done, and doing some kind of celebration, some kind of fun celebration, and just inviting people. We will meet the grant requirement. What I did say was I thought that if, in fact, and I think you'd mentioned something about it, the July 4th festivities, I don't know if they're actually on July 4th this year, but assuming is there a Mount Marathon, I don't even know at this point, Mount Marathon is running this year? On the yeah. 7th. On the okay. 7th, yeah. Yeah. So if we chose over that weekend, for example, not to put a big hurrah on, but say to, you know, do something to promote, let's say even in the library lobby or somewhere else, to do something to promote the walking tour or to go out and, you know, make flyers available or whatever it might be, walking tour flyers. If we wanted to do something, that would be the time to do it when you got a million people that are there, that, not a million, but when you have 10,000 people or whatever that are there, to get, to get some, some volunteers together and hand out information to encourage people to go on the walking tour. But I think that's about as deep as it gets. I don't think we have the capacity or the time to plan anything larger, and no grant requirement asks us to do it. So, but didn't didn't um, Miss Kingsland tell us that it had to be done by June thirtieth? Any expenditure of funds, but if we've already printed any brochures or anything, and then we just got a bunch of volunteers handing stuff out, we've already met the requirements. We'll have a meeting on whatever June, okay. whatever it is, okay. to celebrate, and then we're done with our requirements. All right. This is just something that we would do um, since we won't have a July meeting. This is something that we could do just to hand out some flyers or something and get people to, to see it, put it in the hotels, put it wherever it might be, just to promote the tour and then hopefully have a lot of people there. 
seeing our detour. Cheers. We don't need to hold an event. Uh, Madam Clerk, I would, um, if I can just mention, June 28th is a council meeting. That's, the, that's Monday before the 4th of July weekend. And uh, perhaps if you're interested, if this commission is interested, we could schedule <clears throat> something either before the regular council meeting to have like, maybe we could get a cake and you could do a slideshow of the signs or kick off something, um, hand out flyers. And by that time, presuming that we're open to the public again, um, and then that would be sort of maybe it might help with the public passing out of the written materials. Are and you guys hearing this? That sounds wonderful. Not to replace any of your no, plans, I know. But I just want to. I know. It sounds wonderful, but um, I think that we just kind of have to monitor ourselves right now and like maybe. See where we're at mid-May, maybe? I don't know. What do you guys think? Commissioner Ward? I would agree with that. Um, I would like to do something. I, I, I hardly endorse uh, what the clerk is saying. Um, I think that council needs to be aware of how much work has been done and the quality of the work. Um, a, a PowerPoint isn't terribly hard to put together. I know Jessica will probably be back. They're pretty easy to put together. But it's the quality of what we've done, Mary Ann's done, that I think is real impressive. I agree. but And I'd like support for when the historic overlay, because at the last council meeting, I didn't get much support. Okay. Um... Well, I think that we have some good ideas, but it took just about an hour to go through all of the signs tonight. And, of course, you know, Commissioner Benoit was explaining things to us, so it probably wouldn't take as long. Um, you know, maybe we can do a shortened ver version of what we did tonight. Pick, pick, pick a sample. Pick a, pick, pick a sample. Uh, five, five properties. But, but it's the quality of the signage. And the quality of the work that's done, this isn't fly-by-night. I'd like to tout it. I would like to show the quality that has been done. And uh, uh, having put together a PowerPoint presentation several times, with Jessica's help, it's not real hard to put together if she's back in the office. Commissioner Benoit? PowerPoints are super easy to create. And basically, you could create each slide could be assigned, so it's not like you don't have any material, you already have the material. The hardest thing is thinking about how you're going to present it and how much time you're going to take, but creating a PowerPoint is easy enough. Okay. So, are we really ready then to take a vote on doing something before council, before their meeting on Monday the 28th of June? Oh. It's just an idea. I just oh. wanted to mention it because of the timing of it. it was right at the end of July, June when your yeah. deadline was. The one thing, yeah, Commissioner Lebrecht? The one thing that I do like is, so our, our challenge right now for time is having to create extra things. By the nature of just tagging on to a city council meeting and having a short presentation, we're not having to create an additional meeting. Yeah. And we will, again, to the, to the progression of things, and moving at some point to that overlay and so on, it's a great opportunity to get out in front of the council the support we need. It is a city project, incidentally. Mm -hmm. So it's to get in front of the council, report to council on the work that we've done, and to uh, give credit where credit is due. And then I think it sets us up well to for credibility for things like the overlay. So, and it's not creating additional meetings. Okay. So I, I'm, I'm, in, I'm in support of it. They're not going to give so, us a tremendous amount of time anyways. I'm guessing they're not going to give us more than five or ten minutes anyway. So we just have to put a five to ten minute presentation together to promote and then say, go check it out. Okay, Commissioner Brick, are you willing to do a motion? <laughs> I am willing to do a motion that we 
uh, present on our project at the June 28th uh, meeting to the City Council. Yes. Can I get a second, please? I second. Thank you, Commissioner Ward. All right. Well, good. That's cool. Oh, Commissioner Benoit. I was just thinking, just like I just said, ideas like if you're going to create a powerpoint to do some kind of presentation to city council you could take that same thing and you could do a presentation like it's a library like they do like the earthquake movie or you know you could do something like that around fourth of july as something and another thing is you can take a powerpoint and either put audio in it or music and create a video. Mm -hmm. You just save it in a different way to create a video. And if you do that, then you have a video that you can put on Facebook. So you can take that product of a PowerPoint and do a lot of things with it. Is I like, what I'm what I'm saying. I so like I like the sound of, of that. which you don't have to be there. You just put it on post yeah. it on Facebook. You don't even have to have a meeting. Yeah. It can just be there. As and, a way to reach people. Yeah, that's great for our coastal community because we have a lot of rain. So it'd be kind of cool for the visitors just to be able to go into the library, stay dry, and, you know, see the signage. That's a great idea. And then, yeah, Facebook. So, yeah, so it's not wasted work. It's going to be what we use over and over and over again. It's a great idea. Commissioner Benoit? Well, this part is like... Uh... I just thought besides a video um, that you could put on Facebook, because something like that, you can't. People have short attention spans. It needs to be like three minutes or less. You can't okay. have something long. But you could create a longer video that has audio that tells the story that you could be playing like at the, you know, if they do it at the museum. But you, you know how sometimes you have something like a museum or the library, you could run it and people stop and they listen and they take as much time as they want. Yeah, something that sounds like good. That could be an idea. That sounds you know. good just as long as it, um, Longer. it doesn't burden us because we still have a lot we're working on. That's just my only I know. caution. Well, I'm just thinking out loud and brainstorming, but of course, all those things take a lot of time and work to create and put together stuff. So. Okay. Um, okay, so next on the list is discuss the plans for supporting Hoban Park and the flower planters. So this is something that I've been doing and Mary Ann, I mean uh, Sue has kindly told me the um, last summer especially that she's more than willing to help water because that's the biggest hassle. Um, and we know from Linda Lasota that the tall yellow flowers, the marguerites, are the only ones that are strong enough to stand up to the wind and the um, salty spray. So the, the only other you know, question is what goes around the base? And what I did last year was terrible. What I did the year before that was lobelia. So it was like you know, the Alaska um, railroad colors you know, navy and yellow. So, and that, they, they did pretty good. So we'll just see, but any comments? I, I'm happy to help you water. The other thing, Marianne, is there any replacement from what we did last summer that, that might have to happen at Hoban Park? Commissioner Benoit? Yes, there is, because mm -hmm. uh, we expected when we planted the lilacs and the roses that a bunch would die because they were planted in the fall. Some would survive, some would die, and then we would have to go back and plant some new ones in the spring. And Cheryl has been hopefully nursing along some, like, the lilacs, unless they're dead. Like, I, I had some, too, and I think I killed them. Yeah, I think I did, too. So, so basically what we can do is just keep those little pots of dirt, and I'll have to go get some more clippings of the... Um, lilacs and I have some rooting hormone left so I have to go get more let them get rooted and then we'll go plant those and then also um, and I'll have to dig up some roses too my guess is we'll probably need to yeah some of those. that corner where we put the roses and the lilac we were not able because the city thought we were done 
we were not able to pull up a multi-branched uh, mountain ash, and I fell on it. Man alive, that hurt. My butt was bruised for months. But anyways, so that needs to come out, and we were not successful in getting the weeds and the grasses out. So we really should do that because, you know, that doesn't that doesn't work well. So it would it'd be good if we pulled the stuff out. And then, yeah, replanted roses if necessary, lilacs, you know. And then um, actually put some good soil on top of that ground um, or some other ground cover that prevents the weeds, you know, from coming back up. That's my suggestion. Commissioner Minois? Well, it sounds like we need a work day. Plus, I have some exciting news about all that. When I was in talking to Jackie about the sign, or yeah, the signs. I had heard a rumor that she had part of the original fountain in her office. So I asked her about it and she showed me. She has the base of the fountain in her office that she has some plants in. And I said, wow, that'd be super cool if it actually went back to Hoban Park and maybe we could plant something in it at Hoban Park. And she's like, I'm happy to do that. And she told me that she knows who has the original fountain part, and she gave me that person's name and phone number, and I haven't called them. I can't remember the name. I'll have to look it up. But she said, I bet that person would be willing to donate the other piece, and if they would, we could get the original pieces back and put it down there and plant some flowers in that. That'd be nice. So I think that would be really cool to have yeah. that store thing. Yeah. I always thought that it was broken, which is why it was taken out. But if it's actually intact, why not? So um, I'll, I, I forgot about it, but I'll call that person and see if, they, if they're willing. And if nothing else, at least we have the piece from Jackie's office. But it's really, it's super heavy. So I thought maybe Jim could help us because he's a strong one. He <laughs> could get it and bring it down there. So that was my, that was my idea. Thank you. That's great news. Yeah, so um, I didn't bring this up yet, but in-kind um, donation, I was thinking um, Commissioner LeBrack getting a hold of Resurrection Rental and the Boleyn Brothers to see if they would donate or reduce the cost of the post hole digger little car truck thing. I had a conversation with them earlier today. Um, in fact, about uh, post hole digging for the signs, and I have an idea of cost. The cost is not too terrible. It does somebody to operate it properly, though, and they get a whole bunch of information on how you run back hole and how far, it, what it costs, how you run it, and the things that you need to do. So uh, we certainly could approach them about that. We just would have to write a letter or something up about it. See. Okay. The other one who might be a friendly to us too is uh, Bruce Jaffa, who we're working with, uh, with on the McMullen building, um, has offered us for He thinks that he says you guys are doing so much work. He watches all of our meetings and so on. He may also be able to offer us. I don't know if he has appropriate equipment, construction side that might be able to help us as well too. So. Oh, that's possible. wonderful. And if if we do end up with this little tractor post hole drigger machine. Is that something that you could operate, Commissioner Pemberton? Yeah, I'm a equipment operator, so. <laughs> oh, you are my hero, Jim, because I had a long conversation with him about that today. And they're like, it's so easy. You just dig a hole, then you do this and that. And we, we did figure out, which might be something valid, valid too for us. We did figure out that you can't use, say, the auger because the ground just collapses right back around it, so you have to actually dig a big hole. And then there's things called sonitudes you have to put in to pour concrete. So somebody see Jim shaking his head, something like Jim, the guy's like, well, you just go hold and you put it back in. It's really easy to operate. I'm like, you don't know me. Jim's in the truck. So that's great news. I'm nodding about the sonitudes on, on Eric's behalf. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we put it in the deck. I think, yeah, I can tell you all about that. Sonitudes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Eric would be nodding, yes. Okay. So, that's great news. Yeah, absolutely. I knew 
you'd be our heavy lifter, Commissioner Pemberton. <laughs> um, all right, so moving on to informational items and reports. Um, so, do, did we want to do any amending um, for our priorities that have come back from City Council? That's on page 21, I think. Uh, yeah. So. I looked them over, Cheryl. I didn't see anything that I would change. I just looked them over briefly, but they looked, it looks good to me. Was there, I mean, I didn't see anything. Um, well, I did get the annual certified local government grant report to the State Historic Preservation Office. <laughs> I'm sure it does not look very professional. <laughs> Um, and we're working on the awards. We're working on public outreach. Um, a big part of that is Facebook. Um, so yeah, we've got to work on, and I guess I'm chief, chief on this, update, review, and submit the Seward Inventory of Historic Sites to the Offices of Historic History and Archaeology according to the guidelines for the Alaska Heritage Reser Resources Survey with annual review. That's going to have to be something that we take a look at, or I take a look at, whatever, this fall. Uh, Marianne did suggest that in the, we've done so much, you know, research on the um, 25 properties that we've done that we may be able to glean some of that information and, you know, add that to our inventory. And so we've not promoted or nominated structures to the sites for Seward Local Register. I just think we're kind of, you know, we're, we've been pretty focused on this signage product project. So, you know, and then, like, we're going to move into the historic overlay. There's just a lot of regular stuff that we have to do, too. So I'm really glad that Commissioner Lebrecht suggested that we not apply for the CLG this year. A good move. Um, any questions about this? Okay, moving on to page 22. This is the Preservation Commission priorities and schedule. And I wanted to make sure that we were reviewing this. So um, we can already remove um, the CLG for this year because we've made the decision not to do that. Um, we're, you know, in our first months, we're, we're focused on our CLG and everything we're on, I mean, yeah, everything we're doing, we're right on time with. So I'm really happy about that. And uh, we'll just have to move July mm -hmm. to June and August. So no big deal. Yeah, we're in good shape. Any comments? Concerns, deviations. Good job, Cheryl. Oh, good job, Commissioner Steve, uh, Chairperson Steve. Really nicely done, keeping us organized. That, wow. <laughs> good job. Thank you. Well, that goes more to our clerk. Thank you. <laughs> Um, okay, so we have a special meeting request, and this is at our April 23rd, uh, well, I guess we're having a special meeting on April 23rd, and this is for the purpose of voting on the nominations for the Annual Historic Preservation Award, and then drafting the proclamations to present at the May 10th Council meeting. So clear your calendars for that, because that's not a normal mm -hmm. meeting time. Okay, and then... We have calendars that Madam Clerk put Could together for us. Could you repeat that? Could you repeat oh, so, that, Scott? Oh, April 23rd, we have a special meeting. It will be at t oh, yeah. 1045 a.m. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. That was the work session time when you... When oh, it's a Friday. Oh, okay. Yeah. You okay. scheduled that at um, last month's regular meeting. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, Commissioner LeBrecht, are you going to be able to make that? It's another Friday morning. My calendar right now is clear, and I have a hold for HP meeting 
on that day still. Okay. I'm only at the mercy of my boss to keep here. It's kind of, believe it or not, 15 days now is like forever from now. Okay. For now, it is in my calendar and it is blocked. Yeah. Okay. I can say with more certainty on the evening that I'd be free. I, I certainly will try to block everything I can. This isn't going to be a long meeting anyways, right? Right. Uh, could we do it's it? A 30 could, could, we, could we do it April 22nd at 6.15? Would that be um, allowable, Madam Clerk? Uh, I'm fine with leaving it for 23rd. If 22nd isn't any better for me, the point is it's two weeks from now. It's hard for me to tell. So we everything is year end for us and it's all merging together. I'm fine with this morning time. I will try to get blocked out. Uh, Commissioner Benoit. We already have a meeting scheduled for April nineteenth. Can't we just tack it on to that? Oh yeah, that's the work session, right? Work session. Perfect. Yes, so but we can just we make, make it a little longer? Yeah. Whatever, so, instead of well, no, it doesn't close till the twentieth. The deadline doesn't happen till the twentieth. That's oh. why you scheduled it on the twenty-third. Right. Um, okay. Sure. Yes. I I still apologize. I I have a conflict on the nineteenth until seven p.m. I'm available at seven. I'm not available at six. Okay. So I can meet that night, but I cannot meet until seven. I have to call volunteer meetings statewide with five volunteers. Why don't we just make it start at seven? I can do seven or seven fifteen and I'm good and I'm I'm clear. Uh okay, so we're talking about making it seven or seven fifteen on April twenty second PM. No, on the nineteenth no. thing. The work session. Ooh. You want to, or, or are yeah, you going to move you know, the 19th? Yeah, but so the public has until April 20th to submit these. So if you're doing it on the 19th and we're going to, you know, vote on who we're recommending, kind of cuts them off. I don't know. 22nd is great for me, 19th is the problem. 22nd is great. Okay. Uh, May 3rd? Huh? May 3rd is a Monday. That's another open day. Uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, May 3rd. And then, and then uh, the May 10th meeting is where it's presented at City Council, right? Yeah. Okay. How about May 3rd in the evening? Can I kind of have a summary here? I'm a little confused. I've written 22, okay. 23, you know, can we just, May 3rd, no other special meeting. Right. What, the, what? May, the May 3rd would be the special meeting. Moving it, rescheduling what? from April 23rd to May 3rd. Rescheduling from... Thank you. Okay, you got that. And so, in, a, in no earlier than 6.15 so that uh, Pemberton can right. attend. Right. Are Thank we, you. Are we all good with this, commissioners? Yeah, May 3rd is fine, but we also still kind of, we had scheduled a meeting for April 19th at 6.15, and Tongue said he can't do that until 7, so we also need to kind of readjust that time on that one is our next meeting yeah. we were talking about so that we can actually have a quorum. And okay, so let's go over to the schedule. Um, okay, so the 19, that was where we scheduled the extra work session? Yes. Okay. And Tongi, you're saying that the 22nd would work better for you? I'm, 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 confused. yeah, I'm confused about the 22nd would work better for me, or that Monday would have to be at 7.15. Okay. The 22nd doesn't right. work better for me, but I could do 7 o'clock on the 19th. Okay. Um, well. I'm confused. I'm, I'm a little 
I'm a little confused with the purpose of the 19th and the 3rd, though it, it does seem like somewhere along the line we have to combine whatever. What, what, yeah. Okay. Okay, let me explain. We can't combine it because it's the 20th. We can't combine it because the public has till the 20th. I understand this, but yeah. And the third, um, yeah, so we're doing the third so that the public has plenty of time to get their nominate or their, yeah, their applications in. So then we were going to do the 19 as our work session because we have the work session on, yeah, okay. So then the 19th was to be our work session. And then we go back to <clears throat> um, Thursday the 13th for what we're going to have is a work session followed by the regular meeting. And then we're going to have, which one was it? The 24th? 17th. Of the May. 17th. Mm -hmm. Okay. The following Monday would be the work session. And I highly recommend that we stick to that because we're really into it hot and heavy at that point. Okay, so could I just have a summary yeah. of what we just said? Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. So, moving this special meeting to May 3rd, and that is a meeting to vote on um, the historic award winners, which will be presented at the city council meeting on the 10th of May. And then April 19th is the extra work session, which is actually good because we didn't have a work session tonight. So I, I suggest that we stay with our work session on Monday the 19th. And then the next work session is going to be, um, we'll have our regular meeting on the 13th which will be preceded by a work session. And then the chamber is open on the 17th. So that one, uh, uh, we, we, yeah, we maybe could get away with not having it because it's so close. You can always cancel it. It's, I mean, if you guys decide that you don't want it. I think oh. the only question is on the 19th for the work session, can we change the start to 7 p.m. rather than 6.15? On the 19th of April. Oh, yeah. Can the start time change to 7? Is there any objection to that? I think that somebody requested 7.15. Um, for the 19th. Can Mr. Benoit? I'm a little confused because... I had written down that on April 19th, that was actually our work session, mm -hmm. that we were going to start at 7.15 because of Jim's schedule. And that then we also, then the next work session was May 3rd, which sounds like we were no, going to do a work a session meeting. and then maybe attach the special meeting to it and make it longer. No. Like both things were going to happen. Okay. Because we already said we were going to do May 3rd as a work session, and then we also no. have May 17th as another, a third work session. And so now this <laughs> thing about the 13th, I'm confused, like, what is that? Okay, hold on just a sec. So, Madam Clerk, can okay. you clarify, please? April 19th at 7.15 is a work session. That's all you have for the rest of this month of April. In May, May 3rd at 6.15, you have a special meeting to review the nominations for the award and vote on the recipient. And then May 13th, starting at 6 p.m., you have your work session. Whenever you conclude that, you can go into your regular meeting. On May 17th, you have a work session at 6.15. And, and then you don't have anything the rest of May until, and then June 10th at 6 o'clock, six you start your work session. And when you conclude that, you go into your regular meeting again. Okay. Um, and then on the 28th, 
that's when we present our work to City Council. The and 28th of June would be your presentation. Right. Yep. So you'll have to tell us what time we do that. Yeah. That would be like at 7 o'clock. Oh, okay. Shortly seven after. Yeah. All right. 7 o'clock. Okay. All right. So now we have a question here. In May, we're meeting on Monday the 3rd, and that is to decide who we are nominating for the Historic Award. And then we have a meeting the next week on the 13th. And in order to have a work session, we can't have it two weeks later. It would be the next Monday. So I'm wondering if maybe we don't need that, and if we do, we can just call a meeting? Or schedule it, and if we don't want it, cancel it. Okay, Commissioner Benoit? Sorry, I'm confused. You just mentioned we have a meeting on April 13th. I don't have that on that list that Brenda just said. We were supposed to have a meeting May April 19th at 7.15. Okay, now wait. So, is, is there also a meeting on the 13th? Okay. Yes, April. so our, it, that's the second Thursday in May, so that's a regular meeting. So it starts with a work session, and then it goes into a regular meeting. But the Monday I know I have May 13th down, but I okay. thought you were talking about April 13th. No, and then backing up, Okay. the Monday, the 3rd, is when we're going to decide who we're awarding historic, history awards to. And okay. no, we don't have anything in April on the 13th. The, um, okay. We do have a work session on the 19th. Right now, what we're doing is deciding if we want to schedule a work session on Monday the 17th, which is only a few days after our meeting, because we can't do it the following week because of the council meeting. So. Do we schedule the 17th, and if we don't want it, cancel it? Or do I call? I don't know. I need some help. You can always cancel it on that Thursday of the 13th. At okay. That meeting, if you if you don't if you decide not to, what you can wait till then. Okay. Okay. This is what we're going to do. So at our regular meeting on May. 13th, we'll decide that night if we want to do this work session on the 17th. If we don't, we'll cancel it. Okay? Okay. But for now, it's scheduled. So, should I go over these now? We're going to have the next meeting in April is the 19th. And that's going to be at 7 15. Mm hmm. And it will be here in Chambers. And then on in May, first Monday, the 3rd, we will meet 615 for the um, his, History Award to decide on who we're doing that for. The 13th is our regular meeting, preceded by a work session. And then we've scheduled the following Monday, the 17th, for a work session. At the Thursday meeting, we'll decide whether we want to do that work session or not. Now, June. June, we'll want to put down on the 28th our presentation for council. And that's going to begin at 7 p.m. or thereafter. And June 10th is our regular meeting, which will be preceded by a work session. And um, I you want to schedule a work session on Monday the twenty first? To go over maybe our presentation for council or go over anything that's loose ends for where we're at on the CLG. Okay, so we'll do a work session on Monday the 21st at 6.15. Oops.
Oops. I see somebody with a funny look. I just lost track a little bit. Okay, I'm, I'm in my own head with my upcoming schedules that I have going on. I... I'll send this to you, Tongi. Okay. Yep. Uh, Commissioner Ward? I was trying to put all this on a calendar, my dog watch calendar, and um, it was the 21st, Was I, I missed the 21st, that one sort of came at me, okay. that's the week before the, that, so that's June 21st. Yes. Okay. Yep. So that's going to be a work session at 6.15. That will be to go over any loose ends for the C CLG and also to go over our presentation loose ends or whatever. Okay. Do I need a motion to accept these dates? No. Good. Okay. So, Tongi, I'll send these out to you um, and I'll copy Brenda in to make sure I'm right. How about I send them out. Oh, great. To the Brenda's, commission, if that's oh, all right. <laughs> Brent, it's perfect. Okay. Um, Commissioner Ballou is, I mean, uh, Clerk Ballou is going to send out our dates. Yes. So there's no confusion. Thank you. <laughs> okay. So now, going back to where we're at. Okay. Get over to the right page. Um, okay. Okay, so we've gone over informational items and reports. Do we have any citizen comments, George? We have no one attending but us. Great, thank you. Um, commission, commissioners, would you like to make any comments? I just like to say, I think we've done a good job. Me too. Thank you for all of your great, great, great work. Commissioner Benoit? I just like to say, I think we've done a good job too. And I hope that you guys um, were pleasantly surprised and pleased with the way those signs look now that you actually got to see some of it. And, and the kind of like the basic end result. So I, I hope that it's, uh, they were meeting your expectations. Impressive and professional. You are well. I already addressed those. You are higher. You're telling good stories, so. You are higher than anybody could have expected, Commissioner Benoit. Well, thank yeah. you. Yeah. Thank you. And in fact, just for, uh, you know, bedtime stories, if you could send those to me, that'd be great. You know what you showed us tonight? Unless that's a real pain for you. And then in that case, no, never mind. No, they're all in one PDF, so I can send them. I just realized that, you know, the edits aren't done yet. So it's just all in good time. It'll all be hopefully perfect. <laughs> yep. Um, yeah. And Commissioner Lebrecht, I appreciate all of your uh, communication that you've been doing with Katie and Resurrection Rental, Great Minds Think Alike. Uh, Commissioner Pemberton, thank you so much for your willingness to take the heavy muscle and get our signposts in the ground. And um, yeah, I'm real pleased with our commission. Thanks, guys. And with that, it is 7.50. We are going to adjourn this meeting. Here, here.